recording. Recording has started. Good afternoon or good morning, wherever you may be. This is Gerald O'Dwyer, Managing Director for Blackmore Partners. This, con this uh, audio conference, or I should say go to webinar conference, is being recorded. Uh, this webinar conference is brought to you by Blackmore Connects, your source for everything private equity. A few housekeeping items before we get moving. Please make sure you're muted. Please ask questions via the question box as we go through it. This is going to be very participatory. Uh, Sue, will you monitor the questions, please? I mean, uh, not Sue, Sherry. Absolutely. Okay, great. Thank you, Sherry. You will be sent a link for the recording. The link will be live for a short time unless you are registered as a bronze or gold member. Uh, for everyone listening, please go to blackmoreconnects.com and just get a free bronze membership. You can get rid of get uh, get rid of get all of our recordings uh, for free. Everything you need to know about private equity. Okay. Upcoming webinars. Uh, how to choose operating, how PE firms choose operating partners. I know many of you in the listening audience today, there's well over 400 of you, uh, are looking for how do I go about working for private equity firms? What are the, how they choose operating partners? An operating partner simply said you're like a consultant on call to all the different private equity firms, parachuting in, assisting the senior leadership teams, to execute on a could be an acquisition, it could be hiring new people, it could be a strategy, strategy execution, any of those. Another one uh, for those new members using the Blackmore databases. We have over 12,000 private equity firms. Once again, Blackmore Connects is designed to help you uh, do it yourself connections to private equity firms versus paying a placement agency. Blackmore Partners Inc. does have a placement group. Typically they have, they charge a, on a retainer about $5,000 a month. I'll put the person in charge up uh, on that, that's Shihan Chow. But if you don't like those type of um, fees and want to pay something close to about 1 30th, I just recommend you join Blackmore Connects and they can show you how to do all of it yourself with all the tips and tools and there's so much uh, that they offer there, uh, but happy to connect you with Xian Chao that uh, her and her group handle that. Uh, let's see, how to get the most out of private equity meetings at the October conference. The October conference is filling up quite nicely. Uh, we have 25 seats left, uh, so please make sure that you get your registration in. Currently, the price is $7.99. It will be going up to $9.99 shortly. Uh, we also have upcoming mini webinars introducing each of the private equity firms that will be at the top October conference. We expect well over 20 private equity firms to be at this event given the current rate. We're adding new private equity firms each day. If you want to find out what private equity firms are going to be there, you can do the following. You go to uh, Blackmore Connects, you go to conferences, the October 12th conference, you scroll down and you'll see some of the speakers that will be attending and you keep scrolling, there's uh, more coming every day. This is updated on a daily basis, so please make sure that you get registered if you want to get a seat for the Chicago uh, conference. Once again, this Blackmore Connects is a subsidiary of Blackmore Partners. Blackmore Partners has been around since 2005, and primarily it is focused to put together deals, okay, for, with executives. So if you have a deal, you're looking to get it shopped, you don't have the time to shop it. We work with over 12,000 private equity firms 
in order to get that deal funded and you to end up with some excellent economics. If you want to just be a finder or maybe you just want to be a, a person on the board, uh, we also can arrange different economics where you, where you can share in the, in the fee. So there's a lot of things that we do. Once again, the Blackmore uh, Partners Inc. Group is designed to help executives monetize their background into a deal in which they run. So that is the primary mission. We also at Blackmore Connects have a talent division I'll talk about in a, in a moment. So if you want to um, uh, go here. Okay, thank you very much. So let's go back to the slides, the webinars, and let's go back to the full screen. So this is part of a whole series, Blackmore Connects Presents, How to Land a Private Equity Job in a Rapidly Slowing Economy. This one is upgrading your resume. We're, I'm here today with Sue Sarkassian and Sherry Sullivan. Can you just say hello so I can hear you? Hello, this is Sue Sarkeesian. Hi there, this is Sherry Sullivan. Hi guys, thanks for being here. Once again, this is what uh, the Blackmore does. Uh, the partners at Blackmore, you can see here, Gerald Dwyer, Chian Chow, Yelena, Mike Johnson, Grayson, and others. Session two of 24, we do these webinars every other week. They're all up on the, on the, um, on the, where do we put them? Up in the Blackmore Connects, there's a section called webinars. You can go there and see them. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, go into Sue and Sherry slides. And I'm going to start here. I want to welcome both of you. And I want to go on to why it's so important, why I have Sue and Sherry here today. Because as you're going and uh, uh, reaching out to private equity firms, so let's just assume you're either a gold or bronze member, you have an outreach campaign. We've talked in our previous webinars. You want to have between two to 500 private equity firms that you're reaching out with various campaigns. See other webinars on what I mean by those campaigns to connect. Well, at some point, typically it's in week 14 to 22, you're going to have uh, quite a few private equity firms that are curious about who you are and your background. So what kind of resume is going to get private equity's attention? So that's why we have Sue and Sherry here to talk about developing your executive brand for private equity and venture capitals, uh, capital markets. Your executive brand team offers, that's how the, they look at their team, their uh, resume brand team in a box. They've got 35 years of experience in evaluating, developing, and managing executive brands. Sue has distinguished herself as a highly respected advisor to senior level executives, entrepreneurs, and business owners, investors, and consultants. In fact, I hired Sue and Sherry to work with me to give Black myself a do-over. I haven't updated my LinkedIn profile, nor my a resume. In fact, I don't even if recall if I even had a resume before Sue and Sherry came along. Sherry is a certified professional resume writer. And by the way, Sherry, I didn't even know there was such a designation. Indeed there is, yes. yes. Well, the, so she's a professional resume writer, writer with extensive expertise working with senior level executives, business owners, investors, consultants, and board members. Perfect. That's our, all of our, uh, that's our whole audience here, Sherry. So be, uh, so I'm going to start and turn it over to either Sherry or Sue. Uh, Sherry, you want to start? Oh. I, I certainly can, sure. Um, I, I think one of the, the most important things that Sue and I talk about is, is preparation and um, making sure that the executives that we work with are fielding opportunities um, at a point where they are completely prepared. And that means you know having a portfolio ready, um, coaching, um, you know, coaching time to, to work through that strategy, uh, an online or um, social media presence with a LinkedIn profile. Uh, there are a lot of executives we work with who are scrambling and shortcutting the process 
because an opportunity has come up and in 24 hours they have to have a package ready to go. And, and we really encourage executives to take the time to strategically work through that process, to think through it, to work through it, and, and have prepared a strong presence out there for any opportunities that come up. Yeah, you know, you so talk anything about, you want to add uh, to that? Siri, uh, it's so critical. I think one of the first things I noticed that private equity firms ask for uh, from Blackmore is send me a link to this guy. So when our talent group is working on filling positions, this is one of the things that I hear. They may not always ask for the resume, but the quick and dirty, are they on LinkedIn? I'll be quiet. Right. Well, you mentioned 14 to 22 weeks that it takes that long, but I would guess in the interim, you know, as long as they have a name, they have a way to search for someone on LinkedIn. And, you know, if there's nothing there or if it's old information, it's of no value. Sue, your thoughts about, you know, making sure that, that we have, you know, a strong portfolio for someone? Right. Yeah. And I think that's a great point, too, that, that um, Gerald's making about that that you know, weak time frame. The, the truth of the matter is people are always looking for the right candidates. So you know, whether it's Gerald looking for somebody in you know, the energy industry, the truth of the matter is you always want to be prepared. We are not in the 10, 20 year ago time frame where you know, everybody goes to a company, for 25 to 30 years and retires. And so today, even with, with the private equity venture cap, some people want a bio, some people want a resume, some people want to see the LinkedIn. So what we always do, we want to work with each executive to be prepared. And I don't mean wait, oh gosh, I hurry up, I need something. You know, you want to have that brand, and that brand means your your resume, your bio, your you know maybe you have a, need a transaction addendum, maybe you need there there could be a whole range, but the prime thing to remember is you've got to have that LinkedIn profile up because if you get an executive recruiter or a private equity you know firm that does reach out to you, they see you on LinkedIn and they say, hey, I'd like to talk to you, can you send me your document? So I think there's when you look at when you look at LinkedIn, and we'll get into this a little bit, it's not just, just like the resume, it's not, here, let me show you my work history. It's not, here, let me just have my job and, you know, 200 words on LinkedIn. Preparing the portfolio today for whatever is going to be coming up a week, 10 weeks, 18 weeks, whatever the case may be. So I think Sherry's exactly right. You want to, you don't want to wait until you find something to be prepared. You know, and I don't know about you, Gerald, but I, but I find that, you know, I don't know how much you do this, but when I talk to other executive recruiters, they're always trolling. You know, if the right talent is out there, they're on LinkedIn and, and they're, they're always looking, as are companies today. You know, these things, you know, aren't sitting out there on job boards at, at the PEVC executive level, typically. Good. So uh, this next slide that you just put, that uh, we just put up. Let's talk about you, your background, your focus, direction, key qualities, skills, competencies, differentiators. Tell us a little bit about uh, what's the importance of these here in considering uh, one's portfolio. Um, well, so th there's a there's a. There's a process in place. If, if Gerald says, Sue, I want you to talk to so-and-so and make sure he or she, you know, is in great shape, we're going to talk and we're going to talk about what is your background. Not the jobs you've held, but what have you done? You know, you know have you been on boards? Have you been a managing partner? Have you done transformation, transactions, startup? M and A, you know, what is your background? And so, from that conversation, that plays in to how you develop that portfolio. What does that content look like? What is your background that's going to have great appeal for the private equity 
venture cap space. So what, what I'm hearing, that... Sue and Sherry, these are the ingredients that go in to create your portfolio. What you do is you take these ingredients and they inform the input that in which the portfolio is created. It's the secret sauce. No, I'm kidding. No, yeah. It comes in, you ask it, and it goes into something and out comes that portfolio. Okay. Right. Everybody's background is, is, is different. Or if everybody looks the same, who are you going to choose? Gerald, who are you going to choose? You want to know, why do I want to talk to this individual? And you want to be able to look at that background and you want to be able to see who they are. What do they bring to the table? What are their successes, which determines an understanding of what they are going to be able to do for you. So the background is all about if I have three CEOs or ten CEOs, how do you differentiate each of those individuals so that they're competitive given the market they're building their portfolio to target, if that right. makes sense. So I, I, get, I get it. So when when you're talking about what's talking about you this is what this is you're going to be up for a job and you're going to need to be able to give your background discuss your focus your directions your qualities and skill skills and competencies differentiators in such a way that you win that position that's what you're talking about a portfolio is about am i off base what would you add here and don't forget just tell me whenever you want to change the slide just say Let's move uh, next slide. Yeah, I think it's summary. That's exactly right. And in, in summarizing the slide, what we're what we're really talking about is what are you going to? What's the story you tell in your portfolio that drives the interest? What is it? It's your story. Just simply listing your jobs and a bunch of job responsibilities. That that's just not going to be competitive today. So, Sherry, do you have anything to add? Yep, I think we're good to move to the next slide. Here we go. So, I think with this slide, um, and and also the next slide, I think we're we're getting into, um, you know, that story and and what really sets sets someone aside and I just saw a question come through from Dominic he says I see the profiles of many people on LinkedIn who could be competing for similar positions some are quite impressive how do I even start to differentiate myself among so many accomplished executives so I, I think Sue we're on the right track here explaining that you know there's a story to be told that is different than than another executive than all those other executives but it really starts with being able to draw out those achievements within the context of, of you know, a, a, a leadership change or a turnaround situation, all of those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and so that personalized strategy today is about the resume, which is in the portfolio. But like Gerald said, sometimes, you know, these PEVC just want to link to, you know, a link to go look at your social media. It doesn't really matter if you're on Facebook, but the LinkedIn profile is the essential, um, you know, is the essential social media site today. Because within that site, you build your profile page. Within that profile page, you you look at there are, you know, you've got your headliner section, you've got your summary, you've got your social media, and you know, Gerald, I know we put a number of of uh, YouTube. Um, you know uh, sessions that you've conducted. If you've been, if you're in the, you've been published in a magazine, or you've been on a, you know, a, a, a television show, all of that, and then your background, and then your skills section, and then your groups. So there's, there's a. I don't want to say there's a formula because that sounds cold because the content is different for everybody, but there are critical sections that tie into your degree of attraction and competitiveness, including how you use those LinkedIn groups. There's four or five ways just to network in the LinkedIn, in those LinkedIn groups. There are places to develop yourself as 
opinion leader. So personalizing your strategy is very important, not only in terms of the written documentation, but how you develop your brand out there. And it's completely tied into, you know, I might talk to someone who says, I'm really going after the PEDC community. I'm also open for board leadership roles, and I'm open to an interim executive role. That, that strategy and, and construct content is going to be different versus someone says, I just want to be a managing partner of a, of a, of a private equity firm's portfolio company, if that makes sense. Very clear. So Sherry, you want to take this resume? Yes. Sure. Yep. As we start to work through the development of each brand strategy and the portfolio, certainly the place to start is, is a resume working through um, you know, defining characteristics of, a, of an executive. Um, we hold to no more than two pages. Sue, you have some good statistics on, you know, as, you know, recruiters, hiring managers, other decision makers look at a resume, how much time they're spending on, on each one of those things. Mm -hmm. Right. And, yeah. and it's not a lot of time. It's not a lot of time. You know, a lot of, um, and I think you, you've talked about this too, Gerald, I think a lot of times somebody gets a resume and what they're going to do is if they like what we call the hook, that could be your executive leadership profile, whatever it is, that opening, very opening top section. If people get you, they get who you are, how you fit into the culture, what is your level of function? If they get it, if they're interested, they're very quickly, typically, going to click on the LinkedIn URL to get the detail. I've heard executive recruiters and very senior level say, folks say, five, ten seconds. So it's it, uh, that's so it's, true. So true. Yeah. Uh, Sherry, when I'm involved with looking for executives for our own portfolios on the Blackmore Partners Inc. side, and also I help our own recruiters uh, vet resumes for uh, our private equity clients uh, on the hiring side, whether it be for board members or other C-level executives. I, I can scan a resume, and I only look at the first page, and I'm looking at their uh, title. I'm looking at um, their current job or where they just left, their revenue, the EBITDA, and some story it's telling me about how uh, successful they were, or if the company went into a downturn, what did they do to improve revenues, EBITDA, et cetera, depending on the position? Okay, so okay. You, uh, I think that it, the numbers tell a story for private equity. Absolutely, yeah. and it's very valuable real estate. So you don't want to waste, you know, the opening of your resume with just more job description. Um, you know, lists, those kinds of things. It has to be very powerful. The messages have to be there. We have a question from Paul. He says, I've been um, part of hundreds of transactions. How do I decide what to include? And I mean, I think that that opening part of the resume has to be meaningful. There have to be achievements there. That's where you start to tell the, the story uh, that sets a particular executive apart from a pool of what could be up to 2,500 people for a particular position. So, and then the bio is where you can really tell the story. Sue and I actually today have been working on a case where, you know, we're working on a resume, but there's a great opportunity to tell an incredible story in a bio. It's, it's a, a more um, detailed description of, you know, the journey of, of a professional. So we highly encourage executives to put together a bio also. And then a, an addendum is a place where we can we can basically have lists lists of publications, um, you know, board engagements uh, and appointments, uh, community participation, uh, a long list of um, you know other contributions that also so show extensive leadership, but might not belong in those other documents. Yeah, because you don't want to exceed, like he, Gerald said, I don't read past the first page. If you can get the interest 
that's that's going to lead to a conversation. And so two pages is really tops. You can have, let's say for example, you you've done 42, you know, major global transactions. You could showcase two or three of those that really had great, you know, really great outcomes. So, but then you can say here, I have this addendum that's going to detail out some of the other things. Uh, you know, so you can tailor everybody's portfolio can be different. If, if we're working with somebody who is, um, let's say, uh, has done a lot of R&D and they've got 14 patents, 12 pending, and, you know, again, each individual is different. Everybody should tell their story, but what they need and how they focus the content is really all designed around their background, and it's driven by their target, private equity, venture capital, and also market. What's going on in the market today that holds a tremendous amount of value? Can I tell my story so it's obvious that I fit with what's happening in the marketplace today? Good. All right. This is what I was talking about just a, just a couple minutes ago, the LinkedIn profile. So I look at these day in and day out. Sherry looks at these day in and day out. And most people, what they do is they have their name, they have their current position, which is considered the headliner. They may or may not have a summary, which is a big no-no. If you don't have a very keyword-rich summary, it's a problem. Because every profile on LinkedIn is given a, um, a ranking, or they call it a profile strength. And it's tied into how comprehensive you've set up that profile. Do you have the right header? In other words, um, if you go and you look at, uh, I know we have a slide somewhere, if you look at Gerald's when we set that up, originally it had his job title. Now it's got various things related to managing director, senior talent acquisition. I mean, we have written some of, we, we do tags for people. I have an individual, or we're, we've worked with an individual who has done this enormous global transformation. And so his, his tags could be, you know, I think Sherry used a great word once, transformative impact, large scale global transformation, M&A, PEVC, you know, um, growth strategies. You have to think about those tags as as relating not only to what you do, but what are you trying to project. The job that you're in is not who you are. The job that you're in is the, is the job that you're in, the title. And so to just have your title as your headliner, I think shortchanges you. And okay, let's Sue, let's it. go to my the the position that you did. So uh, with me yeah. here here is uh, this is the before of what you did with me, managing director, talent acquisition, m and M&A. So let's walk through that. Uh, I don't know if the tags are here, if we can see them. I don't even remember what those are, but you, <laughs> uh, you walk me through it here. Well, the tags are under the name. So, um, you know, we... Well, these we, here. Yeah, the headliner. We did yeah. Gerald a little bit differently because Gerald is also trying to, and there's a difference, sometimes people are building their LinkedIn profile to promote their business. We do a lot of these for companies that take their top five executives and their execs aren't looking, but they know people that are looking at the company want to see what that those leaders are all about. So Gerald was using this to really promote his company's brand. Yeah. Right? So the tags, those words underneath the name, help people identify, if you're a candidate, you know, those five, six, seven things. For if you're, if you're trying to market yourself specifically for PEVC, then those tags might be different. Maybe you're going to manage it. Yeah, so 
Yeah, you you opened up my eyes. You said, let's market Gerald. I mean, Blackmore's already known. And mm -hmm. so we went from, once again, from managing director, Blackmore, Sync, all these different tags. I just put them up there <laughs> and made them up. Uh, uh, but you chose a different set of tags. Why? How did you choose these tags? The new it one. It depends on the individual. So Sherry and I just finished working with an individual who is just a, a very senior executive and he has been involved in very creative, innovative brand building leading to these tremendous um, acquisitions that, that really were very key and very public. This individual is really focusing now on doing more of that type of work, having some, um, having, ha looking at some of the PEBC folks, having that interest, so, and looking at board leadership. So we looked at what makes this guy tick. What's his brand? M&A, transaction specialist, brand innovator, board leadership. You know, we really try and use the key words that are going to have the greatest impact and are consistent with the individual and how they're sorry that's okay so the headliner is different I would say I, I don't think I've done the same headliner for I, I might be lying but I, I it would be hard I would be hard-pressed to say that I've done the same headliner for every everybody has what they're highly recognized yeah. for. And, you know, if somebody is looking just for a board leadership role, you know, cool. they may just have senior executive, board leadership, strategic advisor, and just some other things. So, again, I don't want to be vague, but I, it's, there's no, here's, here's what everybody needs to do. But um, Sherry's got another uh, great point as we look at the portfolio and that's if we're saying it let's prove it yeah and I think that that ties into everything that we're saying here and that is you know what makes you special and what makes you different what is that brand asset around which we can build messaging in the portfolio and you know one example that I use almost all the time with with um, executives I talk with is you know, you can tell me that you've increased sales by 200% in less than a year, and my response will be, so what? And some people are sort of caught off guard by that, but it's really a way to get them to think about how in the, you know, very competitive market, you know, achievements can all sort of start to sound the same. And, and how, is, how is an achievement different? And, and Gerald, if you can go to the next slide, yes, it's, you know, was that 200% sales increase within, you know, a turnaround environment? Was it a startup? Was the market in a downturn? Was it as you were launching a new product and it, you know, significantly outperformed? Were there three new CEOs in that year? So I just think there is so much more of the story to be told and our ability to you know, tell that story is only as good as the information we're getting from the executives we work with. So it's a, it's a pretty extensive process in talking with Sue and with me about what that story is so we can really project the best version of each executive, you know, across the entire portfolio. And there's one more thing on that before I jump back into the LinkedIn. You know, a lot of times we will see things on um, somebody's resume or on their LinkedIn or wherever, but we'll see something that says successfully developed and implemented blah, 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 strategies to increase profitability. Okay, yeah. What are you going to say? You didn't do that? that? That doesn't have a lot of value to people. If you successfully developed, again, I go back to what Sherry said. Why? were you brought into that situation? What was the market condition? What did you do? What did that process look like? How long did it take? And what was the result? What was the impact? So that's the other thing when you think about these portfolios, just loading it up with I did this and I did that, that's just not really very dynamic. It also it doesn't points, don't wait, because, you know, 
thinking back to the cause effects and what were the impacts, uh, it may not be readily on the top of your tongue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. True. Right. You know, and you can do a lot of this also, you know, a lot of this can be put together on LinkedIn. You want to be a little careful about what quantifiable achievements you put on that LinkedIn in LinkedIn page. Some of it can be on your resume, some of it because you can control the flow of it. You want to be mindful of what you have on that LinkedIn that's basically out there for public consumption. You know, when you get into the various sections, you have your tags, you want to have a strong summary. Under the summary, if we go back to the top of Gerald's and we show, you know, the summary, um, you know, we're looking at, in that summary section, there's some social media, some YouTube um, things that people can click on. You, you, you want your summary, I will say this, that there are certain consistencies between your your you know your resume and your your LinkedIn so in other words you don't want to have something in your experience section that says one thing and then your resume says something completely different because that leaves you open to okay hmm, what's the truth here or what's this guy trying to do? Or you just don't want it. So there are sections that need to be consistent. You know, you can also get some great quotes on there. That's a really great thing. Um, you, so you've got summary, background. The one of the biggest sections on LinkedIn, and I would dare say the most under um, underrated section is that skills and endorsements section. That skills and endorsements section, I see them every day. People have things in there that are just tied to, maybe they put those in there eight years ago when they joined LinkedIn. And now they're at a completely different level. That skills and endorsements section is, is basically 50 key phrases, key words that project to the reader, um, what is this individual highly regarded for? So instead of having leadership, which is really vanilla, you know, you know, you could have um, transformational leadership instead of strategy. You could use things like um, building infrastructure and strategic roadmaps. You have to think about your individuality, but that section is really going to be designed to really have an impact. People tend to focus on three things immediately on LinkedIn. Your tags, your summary, and that skills and endorsements section. Okay, resumes. Anything here you want to be, I see you have some before and examples. Yeah, let's go to the after example, if we could. There we go. I think this is this is time well spent here. Um, you know, there are often times that we get um, we that we are working with executives who, in fact, do not have resumes. They've been promoted from place to place to place, and what we get is just a sort of a download <laughs> of a lot of different notes and descriptions along with the conversation that we have. And so uh, this is an example of a resume. Um, I think this is the, the executive Sue was referencing earlier about a lot of transactions, um, brand management, brand development, a lot of acquisitions, a lot of transactions, uh, board appointments, and this gentleman is now at a, at a point where he's just interested in you know, continuing to look for board opportunities. So I think that this is a good example of, to show the, the kind of language that we use to show really, um, you know, a pattern. And, and that's what is really important here is to start to show a pattern of achievement. You know, this for this particular person, it's a lifetime of achievement. Yes. Um, you know, and, and, and Sherry, as we, and Sherry as we, I, I think what's well, interesting, you you mentioned in the before here, in the before area, it was just, it, it just doesn't flow. You know, your eyes yeah. get really, 
can really get distracted. And you said, really, it's about a pattern. Um, and that is critical. We'll go back once again, the pattern, the expertise, That's right. select achievements. It allows people really to that this uh, first part here is uh, what there is to look at. Yeah, uh, that's what I look at when we're looking for our own portfolio companies or I'm assisting the talent team. They're doing uh, something for our private equity clients. Um, is it, I just look at this. This tells my story. And then I go, hmm, okay, I'm curious to go on. Right. Mm -hmm. And we have, we have a question that might be timely here yeah. from Richard. He says, I have more than 30 years of experience. Age seems to be holding me back. How do I overcome? Um, you know, and how do I show the value in terms of years of experience? And I know Sue and Gerald, you have both talked about, you know, private equity, venture cap, and, you know, the, the value in some gray hair. So this might be a good opportunity as we're looking at this yeah. resume of someone who has a lifetime of experience and, you know, you know, is a very seasoned executive who could definitely add value in a, in a board. Gray is better. Gray is better. You know, I, I often run into uh, uh, folks around 45 and certainly high achievers in some of these big corporations. And I just know that private equity firms, uh, you know, why they appreciate these executives who are, you know, very high up at 45 years old and running maybe a billion dollar division, they're, they're, huh. Okay, one, that, that's great, but they're looking for gray hair and also different size backgrounds, if possible. Uh, it's not a given, but uh, it, uh, folks, those of you who are listening on this and you're in the 60 plus, you're just beginning your opportunities in private equity, um, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and especially for board positions. Right. Yeah, I talk to a lot of folks also that um, they, they're not quite certain, you know, what are my options or they know one option. Well, the truth is, you know, after about, well, certainly after 55, uh, the, and, and like it or not, this is a reality. Most of the time, 55 plus, you're not going to get your big fortune companies to come after you. Usually, the experience, and that, cut, that ties into that language that you use in the resume, proven success or consistent success. You want to be, if you start talking about age, Gerald likes the, the gray hair. I, I think the private equity venture cap space is great. I think startup, small companies, they want people that have a demonstrated consistent record of creating value, whatever that may be. So PEVC, startup, um, small companies, some mid-cap, consulting firms, independent consulting board leadership. So you have to also tie your story around that because if you have this resume that has all this big Fortune 500 stuff right up front, it's going to scare the little people. So you really have to look at what my age, what's my background, what's the market, you know, what's my target audience. It's all, we are in over 20, 21 years of me doing, I'd say, and you guys tell me if you disagree, Sherry and Gerald, I would say the last two to three years is, is possibly the most strategic market I have ever seen. And so having your documents together, that's half the battle, but having a strategy in place in terms of how to get where you want to go today, very, that's all critical. Sue, uh, perfect. Now, I want to add some things to all of this. It's so great. So when I'm talking about uh, the gray hairs, I'm talking about the C-suite and board members. Mm -hmm. okay? mm -hmm. you know, our, our talent team is doing four CFO searches okay, right now. The PE firms that they're doing the searches for, the companies range from 25 million in revenues to one of them is 150, another one's 400. Um, each one of them have different requirements in terms of the age and energy. So, for example, the one that is in the tooling, aerospace, um, 
they're looking for uh, they don't want gray haired CFOs. They want mm -hmm. six to ten year old six to ten year experience CPA, etc. They want on the younger side. Well, mm -hmm. um, another one we j uh, just finished the same time they wanted younger thirty to forty, but was that went back and forth between big companies and small companies. So each of your resumes, there is a match to someone in private equity. You've got mm -hmm. to figure the ins and outs. How do you figure the ins and outs and how to do that? Well, I recommend that you go on some of the past webinars that Blackmore has connect, uh, continue listening to these webinars, uh, and you will gain some of the strategic insights so that what you can do is adjust your resume, adjust your portfolio as you're applying. And you can do that on the fly. I cannot tell you how uh, most executives I know have anywhere from uh, three to a dozen different resumes, depending on what they're applying for, putting things in different order to based on the audience that they're applying to. So you know, in closing, uh, you've, uh, how do you know what your audience is looking for? One, you got to ask your recruiter. Number two, go to the Blackmore Connects past webinars and listen keenly for those clues and you'll get the exact ways to market to different private equity firms based on the size of the portfolio company, uh, the industry, and the segment. Uh, Sherry. Yes. And I would just like to add one thing to what you just said, and that is that, you know, in developing a brand asset, it's, you know, really about the value that, that someone can, <clears throat> that someone can add, and, you know, you're right, there are tweaks that can be made, you know, this industry, that industry, to generalize someone or to focus someone on, a, on an industry, but I really think the value to this process is in, having executives really focus on what their, you know, competitive advantage is out there. Is it, you know, a turnaround situation? Is it growth? Is it, um, you know, a, a special combination? Uh, you know, someone who is very technical who can also handle operations leadership at the same time. So, um, you know, I think there's a, a good compromise there. Um, so, yes, here is our slide for how you can reach us. Um, at yourexecbrand.com. Um, Sue's, um, you know, we recommend that if you're interested in talking with us, you can reach Sue directly and then also to connect with us on LinkedIn. Absolutely. Uh, for those listening, uh, as you're entering into the Blackmore Connects program, you're getting going. You better have your resume in shape. You better have your portfolio so that you're maximizing every opportunity that comes to you uh, and when a private equity firm responds to your email and phone calls based on the Blackmore Connects program, you got to be ready. Please get ready. I want to thank everyone for being on the call. Thank you for all of you who have uh, with your questions. And uh, that's it for today. I'm going to sign off.